Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Good morning. It is the 2nd of April, Friday, April 2nd. Uh, uh, gee, wow, it's earlier than I thought. I was going to say it's 9.30. It's 8.20, 8.22 in the morning on Friday. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I want to uh, just go on really quick and say hello here and talk about a fun giveaway that we're doing, a $25 giveaway. Uh, good morning, everybody who's tuning in. Good morning, Joel. Um, so, um, hope everybody had a great uh, April Fool's Day, uh, April 1st. Um, I got pranked a couple of times that I actually fell for. Um, and usually I'm the one doing the pranking. And I don't think I got any, I didn't, don't think I got anybody yesterday. Didn't even try. That's unlike me, totally unlike me. Um, so we're doing this little fun contest on Facebook here. I'm going to drop the link here. Let's see if I can drop the link. And um, if you share um, a prank that you've done in the past, um, we're giving away a $25 gift card today to a lucky winner. We started this contest yesterday. And let's see if you can I just drop the link. Got a lot of really good comments. I will pin this comment um, here. So pin it to the top. So it's the first comment in the feed here on comments. Follow that link, and that link should bring you to the contest. Um, it's actually a picture of a person with like a post-it note, like a sticker, like, you know, like a note on their back. You know, like when you write a note and stick it on somebody's back and you know, say, kick me or something. So when it's that, it's an image like that. That's how you know you'll get there properly. Uh, so we're giving away a $25 gift card, uh, random winner. I'd uh, love to hear some stories on how um, you uh, pulled off some pranks in the past. I've done some really good pranks in the past, uh, but none yesterday. I was slacking yesterday, but that's all right. Um, busy day here in the office. Um, so I had, got a lot of work done here yesterday in the office, busy with the Airbnb, last minute check-in this week. We had a guest guest this week that literally like sent an email at, 12, at 12.32 the other day. Um, by the time I saw the email, answered them, and got on the phone with them, it was 1.30. Um, and they were checked in by 3.30. Um, they had their cars packed and everything when they sent the email. Uh, last minute check-in, they were looking to go somewhere so we could accommodate them. Um, they left yesterday and we have new guests coming in tonight. Um, so they left yesterday morning. We have guests coming in tonight, like six o'clock, checking in from the Connecticut area. Um, and that also is another last minute booking. I think I kind of priced myself out um, of the market for Passover. I thought Passover um, and Easter were going to be uh, really gangbuster holidays at the Airbnb. So I kind of elevated the price, I think probably too high. And um, once I lowered it back down, um, we got instant, instant, instant hits. So, you know, the Airbnb, if you have an Airbnb, um, if you've done that before, or Verbo, um, it's not easy sometimes in the pricing. I know they give you a calculator in there, and a lot of people say, well, I don't really know what to charge. You put your address in when you're a host, um, and it starts calculating based upon your address what other places are charging uh, based upon your menus and your address. So that's kind of cool. So for us, it's still a learning game because we're only going to do this for now four months, three months, three full months, January, February, March. Um, but uh, it's kind of like you have to figure the pricing out. So um, I'd love to hear what you've done in the past for an April Fool's Day prank in the past, um, whether it was yesterday or whether it was five years ago. We had some very awesome comments down there. Um, so just drop, a, a, drop us a comment, um, share that link. And we'll, we'll pick that winner later. Uh, by the end of the day, we'll pick the winner. Uh, probably by 4 or 5 o'clock, we'll pick the winner and announce the winner um, here on Facebook. Let's see. Um, what's going on here at the restaurant? Um, Ellenville. Ellenville does the streets every year The where we close well, every year. Last year was the first year. This is the second year where they close off the streets uh, on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. So... Restaurants can put tables out and um, have like one big block party uh, or one big dining, um, you know, like a, a dining area uh, on C Canal Street from our block. They're going to start that again in the village. I think April 16th is the first proposed day that's going to start. I know it's supposed to be 50-ish, low 50-ish and rainy that day, that weekend, which is the 16th. Um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'll keep everybody posted on that. Um, I'm not for closing the streets unless the streets are, um, unless the weather's warm. 
um, because what happens is what I feel based upon previous experience of last year when the streets are closed and the weather's bad, people don't want to walk a block or two blocks away to get to the restaurant. Um, and they can't access access the road that easy. When it's warm out, you want to sit outside and you don't mind walking an extra block to, uh, to be seated um, outside. So hopefully um, we can play it by ear and the village will let us restaurants um, keep the streets open if it's bad weather so you can pull right up to the restaurants. Nobody wants to walk an extra block in the rain. And I don't blame you. So that was our experience last year. Good morning, everybody who's tuning in. Um, I already said good morning to Joel. Hey, Chris, Lloyd, Erica. Good morning, Dave. What's going on, Dave? Um, so uh, let's see. What else is going on here? So that's supposed to be starting the 16th. Like you already posted on that. We bought new tables and chairs. We bought some really bright colors and chairs, like green and yellow, uh, just to make the front pop. And just uh, you know, um, add some color, add some color to the street and to our our sidewalk. So the chairs are in, the, the tables are getting shipped right now, and um, I didn't order enough. And I went on the line the next day, and the sale was over. So probably gonna have to spend, I don't know, on the rest. I'm probably have to spend several hundred dollars extra because I missed the sale. Oh well, um, can't stress about it now. And uh, let's see, Monday night's a beer dinner. We're already booking up for the beer dinner. We're already booking up for the beer dinner. We're getting doing some really rare beers. Um, like one of the beers we're doing, people are asking. It's going to be a surprise on a lot of the beers. There's going to be four amazing beers, like amazing beers. Like here's a 2008 Stone Vertical Epic. Um, we are going to open this. 2008 Vintage Vertical Epic. These Vertical Epic Series, epic series from Stone were amazing. So we're going to revisit that 2008. Um, I have a beer here. Um, well, I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you this here. So... All these beers are rare and ageable. Um, certain beers will actually improve in the bottle or um, actually hold um, uh, their quality in the bottle. Most beers won't, just like most wines won't, most beers won't. You have to get beer that is higher in alcohol, uh, preferably bottle conditioned like champagne where it's still alive inside, um, still happening, um, it's magic and the yeast is in there. Um, so it's bottle conditioned beer, bottle fermented beer. Um, as opposed to um, other ways of, you know, it's like champagne. It's like champagne. The magic happens in the bottle. So beers like that that have the yeast in them still, uh, those beers will hold much longer. So some of the great Belgium-style beers, like the Blondes, the Quadrupels, the Dubels, the tri Triples, those will all age nicely. So um, that is it, folks. Um I think. Oh, some people are asking us our next wine dinner. It's not this Monday. It's the following Monday. It's the 12th, April 12th. And people are asking us um, what, why it's, why it's more money, why it's ten dollars more. That's because, folks, we are serving Movia, M O V I A, Movia. Movia is a biodynamic vineyard that is actually located in Slovenia, of all places, Slovenia. Um, and, you know, Slovenia has a very rich winemaking history, too, just like Italy does. And the vineyard's only an hour over the border from Italy, uh, up from the northern Italy, from Udine. Uh, so it's just over the border, about an hour. Um, Ales is a, um, a very talented winemaker, making some insane, incredible wines. Any wine professional knows Movia. Uh, you talk to other sommeliers, people in the wine industry, wine salespeople, and you mention Movia, they're like, oh, Movia. So the wines are more expensive, so we have to charge more. Uh, just simple economics. Um, the wines are almost three to four times the price that we do serve. So uh, it's uh, at least all of them are at least double. A couple of them are triple. Um, yeah, about triple. Uh, a couple of them. So it's only fair that we charge ten dollars extra. You're getting a fantastic value on those, and we're not we're not cheap on the wine pours um, at all. So we always uh, have enough wine, and it's not. It's, I can't say I'm going to a wine tasting where they. You sit down and do paired courses, and they give you, like, a little bit of wine, and then, like, that's it. And it's like, okay, I have to wait for the next, like, wine. The next wine comes out, and it's like, that much. And it's like, oh, boy. Like, am I ever going to get any wine tonight? Um, and it's not that I'm going there to get drunk. Um, but, you know, you want to, you want to not, make, not, not, not feel like that everything is so closely monitored and guarded, and that's you just get an ounce or two ounces, and that's it. So Jamie and I aren't like that. Um, however, if you've come to one of our tastings and you think you're going to get drunk and drink 
unlimited amounts of wine. That's not the case either. And we have had some of those people in the past where they're just like, keep topping me off, keep topping me off, keep topping me off. It's just a, I'm here to drink wine. I'm not here to taste. And, you know, so there are very, very few times that that does happen. And that's, we're not, it's not a drunk fest, um, but it is a wine tasting with enough wine. So um, we don't, um, we do not really um, monitor um, a, 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 an exact portion size. If people need more wine, we give them more wine. So that's the story of that. So Movia wines, amazing wines. I had a bottle here. Or at least I thought, oh, yeah, I do. I do, I do. I have a bottle here. Don't even know which bottle I have here. Let's see. The Velico. Um, I, don't even know what, I don't even know what this is, if that's a grape or not. Um, this was a gift, this bottle. Um, so um, it's a white wine. Yeah, so I don't even know what this is, um, but it's pictured It's pictured on their website, this wine in their cellar. This is 2011, so I'm going to look more into this. It's not one of the wines that's coming to the wine dinner, um, but we have some. We have a sparkling wine, which is their champagne-style wine, which I have to disgorge table side, which is going to be a real treat. Um, I mean, like, the Movia vines are a real treat, folks. Amazing, real treat. Uh, Pinot Noir, Cabernet, we'll do the Saint Blanc. Or the Pinot Grigio, the Pinot. Grigio. These wines age so well; it's it's just amazing, and insane wines. So that's the story with that, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Follow that link that's there um, to uh, to enter to win. Drop a comment of your funniest. It doesn't even be funny. Just tell us a a, a, a um. And there was one story there. It's a really cute story there. Um, the one mom posted her daughter um, with a picture of she took a brown marker and wrote E like ease on a thing and she's like here daddy here's some brown ease um so even if your kids did a joke on somebody um that's cool post that um so really really cute to see that all right folks have an amazing day we'll talk to you later and um jamie should be doing our cocktail uh live later i had a new cocktail yesterday that i made um I was speaking to carl you know it's carl who used to work for us behind the bar the bald guy with the beard um he's living down south if you remember Carl, he's moved down south. He moved to Ohio now. He's a little further south. Um, he told me I'm an amazing drinker. We were talking on the phone last night. And he was like, Marcus, you need to try uh, vodka, literally a tablespoon, teaspoon of absinthe, um, some cherry, Luxardo cherry, and top it off with a little bit of um, Q ginger brew or reed ginger brew. He goes, try that. And I tried it last night. It was amazing. So I got to tell Jamie about that today. Um, because uh, she wasn't here when I made that. So I got to tell her about that and hopefully she'll make that later. All right, folks, have an amazing day and uh, we'll see you soon.